What's up YouTube? Today I want to show you my Rubik's Cube program. It's a virtual Rubik's Cube. Uh, the source code is available on GitHub. GitHub.com slash Ben Botto. Same as my YouTube name. Um, the program is written in C++. It's fairly optimized. It's faster than other programs I've tested against. Uh, it compiles under Linux with G++ using the 2017 standard. I've also compiled it under Windows using the MingW 64-bit compiler. Uh, the renderer is an OpenGL. It's all customized, uh, all custom. It requires a graphics card that is capable of OpenGL 3.3 or higher, which most graphics cards these days are capable of. Uh, it uses a Fong reflection model, all custom, written in GLSL. You can see the reflection model when the cube is moved. See the faces kind of shimmer. There are also procedurally generated stickers, so all the red stickers here and the yellow stickers and so on. You can see in the top left red corner here that there are some imperfections. That's intentional. There's simplex lighting used to kind of distort the cubes. That gives a cool lighting effect. The light bounces off of those imperfections. Plus it kind of looks like the cube is used, which I like. A cube should be used. Um, it uses quaternions to move the cube. So you get this cool effect as the faces twist. Uh, it uses slurp, spherical linear interpolation, to move from one orientation to another. And that's how you get that nice animation effect. Uh, you can also apply quaternions together really, really rapidly. And you'll never get gimbal lock, which is cool. So you can make kind of impossible moves, things that wouldn't be possible using a physical cube. And you can apply a 100 move scramble like so. That applied 100 moves, the moves listed over here in the terminal. Again, with the quaternions, you can stack 100 moves together really quickly and you get this neat effect and you never get gimbal lock. Uh, the program comes equipped with two solvers. One is a fast solver, which I'll apply now. The fast solver uses the Thistlethwaite algorithm. It usually takes a minute or so to solve, maybe a couple of minutes. Um, it can solve any cube in 52 or fewer moves. And the way it works is by uh, moving the cube into successively easier groups or states. Uh, basically, uses iterative deepening depth first search to search for a solution that moves the, the cube from one group, like a scrambled, any scrambled state, to another group that's a bit easier for the computer to solve. So to go from a scrambled state to the first group, it may the program searches all 18 possible moves uh, three moves per face, six faces, 18 moves. The second group um, is a bit easier to solve. It takes fewer moves. Uh, it eliminates some of the moves out of those 18, so you may be able to solve the cube in just twists of, and just double twists of faces, for example. And so on and so forth. Groups get successively easier until the cube is finally solved. It's pretty quick. It seems to average about 40 moves on the solutions. This one, for example, uh, took 40 moves total. Uh, there's also a Korf solver, Richard Korf solver. That one's optimal and it can solve any move, any cube in 20 moves or fewer. I just applied 15 moves and we'll, we'll solve that one in the background here. Now this also uses iterative deepening depth first search, but it combines it with A star search, which involves a heuristic. Uh, it gives kind of, it, it gives the the search algorithm an idea of whether it's getting further, closer or farther away from a solution. Um, the heuristics that it uses are pattern databases. A pattern database, for example, may contain the number of moves required to solve any permutation and orientation of the corner cubes or just the permutation of the edge cubes. Um, so looking in a pattern database like that, it always gives you an underestimate of the number of moves it would take to solve the entire cube. Uh, Corf suggested using three pattern databases. Uh, he made his program or his algorithm back in 1997 on a Spark Ultra, believe it or not, so his, his resources were rather limited. I used larger pattern databases because these days computers have so much better resources. It takes about two gigs to use this solver and it takes quite a while. I have some statistics on my GitHub page, but most scrambles per my testing take 18 moves on average to solve. 
So somewhere around there. If it takes 18 moves, it could be looking at an hour or 24 hours, somewhere in that range to solve. The average per my testing is about 10 hours, so it takes a while to solve using this algorithm. Although I've tested this program against other solvers available on GitHub, and it's over twice as fast. Now, the reason it's so much faster is I use a linear algorithm for indexing into the pattern databases, whereas the common algorithm, you know, there's an algorithm on Wikipedia, for example, is uh, quadratic in complexity. So that really dominates CPU time, especially when you're generating billions and billions of cube states. Uh, if you're interested in that algorithm, I wrote a an article on Medium and published it, and I'll link that in the comments section. Uh, anyway, this cube state was solved in 15 moves here, um, and that's my program. Hope you like it. Thanks.